What page are we? Page 13. The balance sheet is on page 14. Where do we find the cash payable on the balance sheet? Look at page 14, it's the balance sheet. This is an example of a balance sheet. Where in the balance sheet is the cash payable? What, is, what does the cash payable show? You look, at, if it, you look at where it is, then you can check on page 14 under where it is. It explains about the cash payable. The answer to the second question you can find at the top of page 16. Operating expenses and capital expenses is under expenses. <laughs> Where on the balance sheet do you find account payable? And what does it mean? Account payable. 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 Uh, I don't know if you're waiting for me. I don't know if you're waiting for me. What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. 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 I What's the answer to the first question? Where on the balance sheet do we find the accounts payable? No. Did you look at the balance sheet on page 15? Song Min Gyeong. Where is Song Min Gyeong? Where on the balance sheet do we find the cash payable? <laughs> Don't know? <laughs> Yang Ha Yang? Where's Yang Ha Yang? Where on the balance sheet is the cash payable? I can't hear you. Can you speak more loudly, please? How do you spell it? I think you said the correct answer, but I couldn't hear you. So can you speak more loudly and clearly? Financials, no. <laughs> uh, I think you said financials. Uh, so please listen to the instruction, okay? I asked you to look at the balance sheet, so let's try again. Look at the balance sheet on page 15. Can you find accounts payable? Yes. 
on the balance sheet. So everybody, not just some people, everybody look at the balance sheet on page 15 and find the accounts payable. Okay? So, one of the reasons I'm doing cold call, which means just asking names from the register, is I don't want, when I ask these questions, that some students just daydream and don't do anything. Okay? I want the student to look at the question and try to answer the question. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so let's try again. Look at page 15, look at the balance sheet and try to find accounts payable in the balance sheet. What section is it in? Okay, so let's try again. So, O Chan Hu, where is O Chan Hu? What section of the balance sheet is it in? Liabilities. Liabilities. Okay, and then what are, what are, what are accounts payable? So I received the things, I received the goods or services before I paid the money, okay? So I still have to pay the money, so it's a liability, it's like debt, right? I have to pay the money in the future. Okay, then what is the difference between an operating expense and capital expense? So everybody look at the top of page 16, the answer is written here, okay? So read the top of page 16. Tells us the difference between the operating expenses and the capital expenses. This is for operating expenses. Some two expenses are there. Then capital expenses. You get charged on tariff material. For capital expenses. Okay, so Sim Song Min. Yes, what is the difference? What are capital expenses and what are operating expenses? First of all, what are expenses? What does expenses mean? What is an expense? Like costs, money we have to use, right? Money we need to use to make profit. So what's the difference between money we use for operating expenses and money we use for capital expenses? Can you answer? Uh, operating expenses are expenses that we use day, day to day and uh, they are uh, for the short term and uh, capital expenses uh, expenses for long term such as buildings, land, etc. Yes, that's correct. Okay, operating means like day to day. Okay? Do you understand day to day? Capital expenses is long term expenses. Okay, do we spend money on a new building every day? Do we buy a new building every day? No. Oh, right. Do we buy, do we use electricity every day? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay, so it's a different type of expense. <coughs> so we said that because of the tax law, we can choose whether to include our expense in the operating expense or the capital expense. Okay? So let's look at this question. So you are a firm which has the following revenues. Year 1, 20 million. Year 2, 30 million. Year 3, 40 million. 
Okay, in year zero, before the start of your project, you bought a factory and machinery costing 60 million. Are you going to record the factory and machinery as a capital expense of 60 million in year zero? Or are, would you prefer to record it as depreciation of 20, this should say million, 20 million each year in operating expenses? And why? So discuss with your partner. So E Solvay, where is E Solvay? E Solvay, what are you going to do? Are you going to put the money here as a capital expense? Or are you going to use depreciation? You can decide, you're the accountant. Where are you going to put the expense? Here as a capital expense? Or each year as depreciation? Where do you prefer to put it? A or B? Which do you prefer? Hmm? B, why? Yes, that's correct, why? Why is B better than A? What reason? Hmm? What's a word with three letters that can explain the reason? The word has three letters. Begins with T, ends with X. Has A in the middle. What benefit can we get? Hmm? What kind of benefit can we get by doing B? Hey, anybody else? Tax benefit. How much is the tax benefit? Do we have to do all the calculation or can we calculate the tax benefit quickly? Quickly, the tax benefit is going to be the 60 million, right? Tax benefit is 60 million multiplied by the tax rate. If it's 30%, right? Then we get the 1.8 answer, right? So here we can see we get no tax benefit here, and here we get the tax benefit of 20 million a year yeah. multiplied by the tax rate, 30%. Okay? So the benefit is going to be 20 million. That's a big difference. Okay? So, sorry, 18 million. 18 million. 33 percent is 20 million, right? So, by using the depreciation system, we can. The government allows us to do this. Even though we spent the cash here, this is when we spent the cash. The government allows us to pretend that we spent 20 million here and 20 million here and 20 million here. Okay? Why? Because they want to encourage companies to start projects and make investments. Okay? So they don't want the company to lose out. This is just the tax system. Okay? So for the tax system, 
We can also do the same for R&D. Okay, even though it's a capital expense, we can put it here and we can get the tax benefit. Okay? Do you have any question about that? Yes? Uh, just like I'm telling you, the ta we know the tax rate. If the tax rate is 30%, then that's what we're saving, right? Because here, it's going to be zero. So we pay zero tax, right? Otherwise, it would be 20 million. We would pay 6 million tax here, but here we pay zero. The second one, it's either 10 million or 30 million. So it's either tax is going to be 3 million or tax is going to be... 9 million, okay? And here, tax is going to be 12 million, or tax is going to be uh, 6 million, right? So we can see the difference here of the savings, right? So here we pay 12 million tax of 6 million, so the difference is 6 million. Okay, here the difference is 6 million. Okay, and here the difference is 6 million. So we save six million every year on tax, okay? Basically we save 30% of 20 million every year, okay? And then the total is 60 million, so to do the calculation more quickly, we can just calculate this amount multiplied by the tax rate and we get the answer quickly, the tax benefit. Okay, so does anyone else have a question? This is, we are going to pay tax on this much if we don't, if we just make the capital expense here, this is our profit and this is our tax, okay? If we make the expense here, it's going to be this minus this, this, okay? So we save, here we're going to save six million. We would have paid six million here, we pay zero tax here, we save six million in cash. So uh, then let's move on to financial ratios. So we're going to look at different ratios, like debt ratios and profitability ratios. So the first one is the debt ratio. So the debt ratio compares the amount of assets an organization has to the amount of liabilities. So basically we want to see uh, how much debt we have, right, as a percentage. So let's say that we have a company, it's, it has here assets, and then we have liabilities, and then we have equity. So if we have assets of 100 million, right, liabilities of 90 million, and equity of 10 million, then our company, does it have, do you think it has a high debt ratio or a low debt ratio? Does that look like a lot of debt or a low debt? Low debt or low equity? So high debt or low debt? High debt, right? So we have a lot of liabilities here. So all we're doing is putting our liabilities over our assets. Okay, so it's 90%. So the debt ratio of this company is 90%. Okay? We're using 90% debt and 10% equity, okay? <coughs> if we change the company around, we still have 100 million of assets. This time we have 50 million of liabilities and 50 million of equity. What is the debt ratio? Equal. Hmm? What percent is the debt ratio? 50%. 50%. So it's a way of comparing companies, okay? My company has a 90% debt ratio. Your company has a 50% debt ratio. So that's a straightforward ratio to show the amount of debt. Debt. Okay, debt to equity ratio is a little bit different. Debt to equity is debt over equity. It's a similar one. It's also showing the amount of debt the company has, but a little bit different. This time, instead of putting liabilities over assets, we put liabilities over equity. Okay, so debt to equity ratio. So we have 90 over 10 equals 900%. Okay? So 900% looks like a big number. So that company has a lot of debt, right? A high debt to equity ratio. Okay? 
What about 50-50? What's the debt ratio here? Or sorry, the debt to equity ratio here? It's going to be 100%, okay? So there's a general rule for the debt to equity ratio. It shouldn't be over, much over 200%, okay? So let's say that you have 67 liabilities and 33 equity. Okay, that's going to give you a 200% debt to equity ratio. So it shouldn't be too much over that. If you're up here with a 900% debt to equity ratio, maybe difficult for your company. It would be quite a risky company. Okay, you start a restaurant, you spend $100,000 on the equipment and the kitchen, okay? You use $90,000 as a loan and $10,000 of your own money, right? That's risky because you have to pay the interest on the $90,000. If you don't pay the interest, you're going to lose the restaurant, okay? But if you make a restaurant with 50% debt, so $50,000 loan and $50,000 your own money, it's safer, okay? So these kind of ratios is letting us know how much debt does the company have. So what is the long-term stability of the company, right? A company with low debt ratio, low debt to equity ratio is safer company generally, okay? It depends on the industry. But usually we compare to other companies in the same industry. So we can compare, let's say, electricity company against other electricity companies. And we can compare the restaurant against other restaurants. So does our restaurant have a high debt ratio or low debt ratio compared to other ones? So this, the, the, this one is debt to equity ratio is measuring the company's ability to pay back the loans. The next one is the profitability ratio. So profitability is showing how much profit is the company making. First one is ROC, return on capital. So we already said that capital is money that a company uses to invest and to make a return. Okay? So really it's a return on money. So return on capital measures the return, the profit, that an investment generates for all its investors, bondholders and stockholders. So uh, we have net income, we can include dividends if the company doesn't pay dividends, don't have to worry about that, okay? Over debt plus equity. So we need to use both the balance sheet, let's say we have debt of 50, equity is 50, and we need to use the income statement so we can see our net income. So our net income last year was 10. Okay? So what was the return on capital? It's going to be our net income over the debt and equity. It's going to be 10%. Okay? So it just shows we can also have return on assets. We could have assets here and return on assets. So it shows what kind of profit is the company making? Net income is the profit compared to the money we're using, okay? So I got a lot of money. Am I making a big profit or not? Okay, if I made a profit of 50 with this much money, people are going to be happy, okay? I made a 50% return on capital. So sometimes return on capital can be used to show if the manager is doing a good job or not, okay? Is the manager doing a good job? I gave them $100 last year, right? That this year they got a profit of $50? Yes, 50% return. Do you understand? How about if they just, I gave them $100 and they just made a $1? They just made a 1% return. Will I be happy with that? No, I could have invested, in, I could put my money in the bank and I would have got a higher return. Okay? So I'm going to say to the manager, you didn't do a very good job. Right? So cost of capital is one way, or return on capital is one way of judging the performance of the managers, of the company. Because we, we can't just say compare profit, right? Let's say I made a net income of 50, and you made a net income of 100. But I had this much money to use, and you only had this much money to use, right? 25 and 25. So you clearly did a much better job. With less money, you made a higher profit. Okay, so we have to take into account the money we had available and the profit to make a percentage to show about the performance. So that is return on capital. 
Return on equity is just showing the equity part, not including the debt. Okay? So sometimes the equity investor wants to know, just the owner of the company. I put into the restaurant just $10,000 and I got a loan of $90,000. Okay? Then I made a profit of $10,000. That's 10% return on capital, but 100% return on equity. I put in $10,000 and I got back $10,000. Okay? So it's net income over the value of the equity. So if we made the net income of 10, it changes, right? So we have equity of 50, net income of 10, our return on equity is 10 over 50 equals 20%. Okay? So using this much equity, we made this much profit. Okay? So this is the money for the owners. They look at return on equity. So we have to be careful with using return on equity as a performance measure for managers. Because if the manager's bonus is linked to return on equity, then they prefer to take more debt and less equity. So they look better. Right? So we should really link the manager's bonus to return on capital, not return on equity. Okay? Because if we, it happened in the financial crisis, some of the banks were paying their manager's bonus based on return on equity. So the banks took a lot of debt. If I have here debt 50 50, right? This is my return on equity. But let's say I make my debt 90 and my equity 10. Okay, what is my return on equity now changes to 100%. Okay? Even though I made the same net income using the same amount of money, right? But my return on equity number changes. Return on capital stays the same. So, return on capital is better used for setting bonuses and judging the overall performance. But return on equity we can also use. So, you're going to try and calculate the financial ratios uh, using the book. In the book you have a balance sheet and an income statement. Balance sheet is on page 15. Okay. Income statement is on page 17. Okay. So look at the numbers from the balance sheet and the income statement. Find the liabilities, find the assets, find the net income, find the equity. Once you find those numbers you can do make the calculation. So tell, this company is Microsoft, okay? This is the balance sheet for Microsoft and the income statement for Microsoft from last year, okay? So you're going to be calculating Microsoft's debt ratio, their debt to equity ratio, their return on assets, and their return on equity, okay? So I wrote the equation here. So just find these figures and write them down. You want, uh, you can also write the answers in the book because the question is in the book. Okay, on, pay, on the page, uh, on page 25, you can see there's questions. It's question 10 on page 25. Okay, so you can make your calculation and write in the book if you like. Okay, so page 25, question 10. So you need to look at page 15 and 17.
그렇다면 금요일마다 공부하자 나랑 같이 금요일마다 공부하자 할래? 말 바꾸지 말고 금요일 나 0.54, 나 0.55 나온다. 어. 그치. 그니까 0, 아, 그 자리까지 0.5. 그치. So, can yes. hmm? like I can see the screen, the bottom of the screen. Uh, class is nearly finished, so the next time I have to start off class. Okay. 오늘은 시간 거의 끝났으니까 나쁘고 다음 시간부터 이렇게 있으면 이해가 안 돼요. 데뷔 퀄리티 레이시오, 토탈 라이어빌리티 이거 계산하라고. 이거 하래요? 10번, 10번. 10번이요? 어, 근데 거기 공식 다 주잖아. 그거를 이게 15쪽에 표 있잖아. 15, 15, 15. 15. 15쪽 표 맞춰가지고 하는 거야. 전혀 모르겠다. 예. 메탈 펑. 라티오가. 레시오가 비율인가 물어보는 걸? 비율? 어, 아닌가? 비율, 비중? 아닌가? 잠깐. 나름 이제 알고 사전을 믿으려. 음, 맞다. 비율. 어. 아무튼 토탈 아닐까? 셰홀더 이큐티가 토탈이겠지 토탈 아닐까? 일단 토탈로 난 해볼래 아무 3번을 
it's not an option. So we should be able to do this. It's just a case of looking at the balance sheet, right? Finding our total assets. Total assets is written here, okay? And then dividing that by our total liabilities. Total liabilities is written here, right? So what's the answer to the first one? 54. 54. 54. So we have something like 176 is our assets, right? And the, the liabilities is 96. So we've got 54 percent, right? Next one. The equity ratio. 122. 100. 20. 20. Okay, so we put our debt over our equity, so we should have uh, 96 over 80. Right? So it's 120%. What about the ROA? What's the net income for Microsoft last year? Here we can see it's 12, right? 12 over. Uh, What's the assets? Uh, you already wrote here? Uh, 176. Yeah, so what's the percent? 7%. 7%. Are you happy with that return? No. Hmm? No. Why not? 7% is not high enough for you? Yes. Okay, next one, return on equity? 15%. 15, 15 so you already found that equity was 80. Uh, 12 equals 15%. Okay? So we should be able to do those calculations. Just search for the number in the income statement of the balance sheet and divide. Okay? So we can also look at uh, Yahoo Finance. If we search for Microsoft on Yahoo Finance, they have key statistics. Okay? They have return on assets, return on equity, right? 8.8%. 13.5%. It's about the same, right? The reason it's different is, this is from the balance sheet from last year, 2015. What they're using, the last quarter. Do you understand quarter? Quarter is just three months. Okay, they're using the quarter here. Okay, uh, so they also show their debt to equity ratio. One point here is we can see they wrote the total debt here. So debt to equity ratio can be calculated in different ways. Total liabilities or total debt. So for total debt, for example, they may take out accounts payable or take out some other parts. Okay, if they only look at the bank debt and the bonds, for example. Okay? So there can be a couple of different ways of calculating the debt to equity ratio. So Yahoo Finance, they're just using debt rather than liabilities. Okay? So they have a slightly different number here. But we can find out if that's the, these are the important statistics about the company. So investors look at this when they're deciding, right? Will I invest in Microsoft? What was their return on assets last year? Right? What was their return on equity? Is that good or not? Okay. Uh, how much debt do they have compared to equity? So do you have any question about that? No. So then let's move on from financial statements. These are, as we already saw, we can find the financial statements here. Income statements, this is the same information that you saw for 2015. 12, mil, 12 billion. Okay, balance sheet for Microsoft. Okay, the same information that you saw. Total assets, total liabilities. Okay? So we can find that for any company on, on this Yahoo Finance. They publish their balance sheet and income statements. And we use them to make the ratios. So then let's move on to the time value of money. <laughs> so, time value of money is starting on page 19. So, I think we asked the student before in the class, which is more valuable? Uh, money today or money next year? And they said money today is more valuable. Okay, so this is called the present value. Present value is the value of money today. You understand present? Yes. Present means now. So present value is a concept that is central to compute. 
It is used for the decision making, ranging from simple personal decisions, buying a house, saving for a children's education, and estimating income in retirement, to more complex decisions like picking projects. So present value, even if you don't work in finance, is a useful idea that helps you in your life. Okay? For saving money, okay, for that kind of thing. Investing money. So why is cash worth more now? There's three main reasons. The first one is uh, preference. Okay, that's called the real interest rate. If if I offer you an apple today or an apple next year, and there's no risk, you're 100% sure that I will give you the apple next year, right? Which do you prefer, an apple now or an apple next year? No. So now, why? There's no risk, you're definitely going to get the apple next year. Why do you prefer the apple now? We don't want to wait. Don't want to wait, so patience, right? Or preference. So people prefer to use things now than in the future. Okay? Secondly, there's inflation. Does everybody understands inflation? Yes. Inflation is the same in Korea. So money loses its value because, why? They're making more money. Printing. Okay, money supply is going up. Okay? Prices are going up, salaries can go up, all the, the money is worth less. Okay? So the simple idea, if I print a lot more money, then each one part of the money is worth less, my money will be worth less next year, after you print all the money, make the new money. Okay? The third reason is risk. Okay? A promised cash flow might not be delivered for a number of reasons. If we're talking about the company, for example, the company could go bankrupt next year. I go out of business, so I don't get back my loan. I loan money to the company. Okay? So we have to put all these three things together in order to calculate what we call a discount rate. Okay? The discount rate is going to be how much less is the money worth in the future compared today to today. Also, we can refer to that as interest rate. So, if we want to make this as an equation, we have this, the real interest rate, the preference, plus the inflation rate, okay? And that is equals to the interest rate or the discount rate on a risk-free asset. So, a risk-free asset is the US government bond, okay? Why? Because we're sure the US government will pay us the money back are we 100% 100, 100 sure? No. No, but we're 99.99999% sure, right? So we just call that risk-free. That's a risk-free asset. No risk. So the only things involved there is the real interest rate and the inflation rate. Okay? So if we look at the, the price for our interest on a yield on a 10-year government bond, that will tell us inflation plus the real interest rate. So, for example, if the, risk, if the US government bond gives a 2.78% yield, okay, that means we make 2.78% a year, then we can find out uh, the real interest rate. Uh, so we can subtract inflation from here. If expected inflation is 2.15%, this is the real interest rate. Okay? And actually, the US government also sells what they call treasury, is like bond, inflation protected securities. So it means that at the end of the year, the US government will say inflation was 2%. So I'm going to pay you extra 2%. So it's inflation protected. So we can actually even take the inflation rate out with this financial product. So this financial product tells us the real interest rate. It's a US government bond, which is protected for inflation. So it has no risk and no inflation. So all it is is the real interest rate. And currently that's about 0.63%. So that's people's preference for using the money now than next year, 0.63%. Then we add on to this inflation. Expected inflation in the US is 2.15% a year. And this is the rate we pay 
on the regular government bond, including inflation. Okay? So the discount rate is going to be the risk-free rate of return plus some risk premium. So this is the risk-free rate of return. And then for companies, we're going to have to add on risk. Okay? So do you have any question about that for the moment? These three reasons why time is worth, or money is worth less in the future. Okay, so then uh, let's finish there for today.